or any of those people in Antioch, it's by grace we're saved. It's not because you are a Jew that you are saved. It's not because you are a a Gentile that is not saved. By the same grace, by the same love of God, and by the same sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, we are both saved. But then when those Jews came from Jerusalem and he saw them, he thought they might question me why I'm eating with the Gentiles. You know why he thought and they thought the salvation of the jews who are circumcised that salvation is up there and then the salvation of the gentiles who are not circumcised that salvation is down below there and he so he felt that the jews in their salvation even though it is by christ that the jews are higher that the gentiles were born again and so he let those people he was eating with and then paul the apostle said peter if while we seek to be justified by christ we ourselves also are found sinners hypocrites pretenders and we are not following after the truth the truth of the grace of god is there therefore christ the minister of sin what was saying is what you have done in hypocrisy that is sin what you have done is separating yourself from the gentiles that is sin but now you are born again christ lives in you was it christ that made you to be hypocritical was it christ that made you to withdraw yourself like that is christ then the minister the originator of sin will you say peter that what you've done now which is sin would you say that is the product of christ christ made me do that he didn't allow any answer he said god forbid god cannot be the originator of sin christ cannot be the originator of sin he came to take our sin away and so peter what you've done was not right there's the goal of self-righteousness without grace he's saying don't you know what happens to the people who will not remain on Christ and Christ alone. Acts chapter 8. Reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 8 verse 19 saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, but Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. What's happening here? The apostles had come from Jerusalem, Peter and John. And these people who knew the Lord and believed in the Lord in Samaria, they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. Understand? Salvation by grace. Sanctification by grace. Holy Ghost power by grace but he had done work the work of his labor the labor of his son and the labor of his son and the work of his son had given him gotten him money <clears throat> and then he now said by my labor i got money by my works i got money and the result of my labor here is the money Give me this power. As I give you this money. That's why Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast taught that the gift of God, there we are, salvation gift, sanctification gift, Holy Ghost baptism gift, and this man wanted to buy the gift of God with money. You have thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Look at verse 23 there. Verse 23, I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness. Thou art 
in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Anyone that tries to buy salvation by the works of his hand, anyone that wants to get to heaven by the works of his hand, anyone that uh, ought to thinking he is going to have reconciliation with God by the works of the law, is in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. But we don't have to go that direction. Salvation is free. Salvation is a gift. And the Lord has said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever, a Jew or a Gentile, whosoever believeth in him, that's all you need to do. You come, you forget all your works, and you forget all your labor, and you forget all your self righteousness, and you come to the Lord, whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. You will not perish. You will have everlasting life. As so come, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling, could my tears forever flow, and my zeal no respite no. All these for sin cannot atone, thou, and thou alone must save. And I pray the salvation of God will be ours in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, the lostness of compromisers judged for their falsehood. We're coming to Galatians chapter 2, verse 18. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. What does that mean? In application to, you know, the situation on hand there. Peter had gone in an earlier chapter of, uh, of Acts of the Apostles. He had gone to the gentle house Cornelius. He stayed with them. He ate with them. He slept in the rooms they provided him. And he preached the word of God to him. And while he was speaking, the Holy Ghost came on all those that had him. And Peter himself said, Can anyone forbid water that this should not be baptized in water? Seeing that they have received the same gift of the Holy Ghost as we. And then in the following chapter, he had said, for we believe that they will be saved even as us, the Jews. He had broken down, he had destroyed the ideology of Judaism as if Judaism or the obedience to the Mosaic law will save anyone. He destroyed that and he said by faith, faith in Christ, are we saved? Now, Paul, the apostle said, Peter, you know what you're doing now? By withdrawing from eating with those uh, Gentiles, you're building again the things which you once destroyed. And he said, I make myself a transgressor. If I did that, look at verse 19. In verse 19, for I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. He says it's her faith in Christ. It's the connection with Christ. It's putting our trust totally in Christ that saves us. And we know that whether you're a Jew or you're a Gentile, faith in Christ will reconcile you to God. Christ brings you to God. But now we will forget that and we build again the law. The law of Moses. And we build again confidence in the law. Moses, we build what we destroyed before. Then we make ourselves transgressors. The lostness of compromisers judged for their falsehood. Three things there. Number one, inconsistent transgressors who build on legalism. Legal, the law, legalism. That's the law, the Jewish system of being reconciled to God. The inconsistent transgressors who build on legalism. Number two, incorrigible teachers who breach lawlessness and lasciviousness. The incorrigible teachers 
they have heard, they have known that Christ and Christ alone is the Savior. And now, but they're incorrigible. And they keep on that wrong way and that wrong path of the Mosaic law. Number three, incoherent tricksters. It's like they are playing games. It's like they are playing tricks. And they are incoherent. They cannot even understand themselves. They do things they cannot match with what they actually believe. They are split personalities. They act this way. They think another way. They go this way, but then their direction in their mind is another direction. They think about Christ. And they're thinking of the law. They think about salvation and the justification by faith in Christ. But their works and their activity is like upholding and raising up the law of Moses again. They are not coherent, incoherent tricksters who be, who be cloud is love. They be cloud is love that the people they are speaking to cannot see very clearly. The law of God anymore because they are incoherent. Let's come to number one. Number one, inconsistent transgressors who build on legalism. We're looking at Acts chapter 15 and we're reading from verse 11. Acts 15 verse 11, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. You find in that verse, we, who are the we? The Jews, they were in a meeting together, council together, conference together. They were considering the salvation and the conversion of the Gentiles. And they were all Jews there that they referred to the Gentiles, the Gentiles who have been saved through the ministry of Paul and Barnabas, and they came to report to them, here is what had happened. And then they concluded, they said, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we Jews shall be saved even as they, the Gentiles, let's look at a verse. Uh, we're looking at verse 19 there. In verse 19, wherefore, my sentence is this, that we trouble not them, that we Jews, Jewish believers, trouble not them, the Gentiles, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. They didn't have circumcision, but they turned to God. They didn't have all those uh, offerings of the, of the Jewish people, but they turned to God. They didn't obey all those mosaic laws, but they have turned to God. Let's not trouble them. Let's understand it's Calvary. Let's understand it's Christ that brings salvation from among the Gentiles. They are turned to God. And then he tells us in verse 20, in verse 20, it says, but that we write unto them that they abstain from the pollution of idols. That that one, we need to tell them now they are saved by grace and now they have their love, their allegiance to God and God alone. That they turn from the pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Look at verse 28. In verse 28, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost. It seemed good to the Holy Ghost. It's not because of Moses now. It's not because of the law of, law of Moses. The Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. In verse 29, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, so that your love is wholeheartedly given to God, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Ye shall do well. Fear ye well. Let's come to number two there. Number two there, we're looking at incorrigible teachers who breach lawlessness and lascivious sins. After all that, 
had been settled. No one should go back again to the law of Moses. No one should confuse anyone anymore with, uh, you know, the law of Moses and go back to Leviticus each day and don't eat that and go back to Deuteronomy. Here is what you have to do, the statutes and the laws and everything. Nobody should have gone back to that anymore. But there were teachers that were incorrigible. It's just like somebody has been going to a particular religion before, a particular denomination before, a particular traditional church before, and now he comes out of there and he claims to be born again. He claims to be for Christ and he claims that it is the grace of Christ that has brought him into the kingdom. But now he practices the religion, the tradition that he left behind, incorrigible, that although he says, I'm born again by faith in Christ, the practices of that old religion is what he still continues in. And there are some taboos, and there are some don'ts, and there are some things, never, 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 I can never do that. Why? Is that because of the truth in Christ? Because of the grace of God? Uh-uh. Where I'm coming from, we never did that there. That's what the Lord is saying, that they are incorrigible teachers who breach lawlessness and lasciviousness. We're looking at Galatians uh, chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 19. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh and manifest now there are those who confuse the works of the law and the works of the flesh they don't understand anytime you see works 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 they say works of the law works of the law look at this one this one the works of the flesh as we become born again you become a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. And so the works of the flesh, not works of the law, the works of the flesh that will still try to rear up its ugly head, you understand? You will not get involved with that. You will not say works of the law, works of the flesh, works of doing good and works of this, everything lumped together. I am not there. Look at this now, the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, that's uncleanness, that's chibiousness. Then in verse 20, it says, idolatry and witchcraft and hatred and variance, emulations, raw strife, seditions, heresies. Verse 21, it says, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What he's saying is, now we're justified by Christ, and we come to the Lord, we jettison, we reject, we push away from our lives the works of the law. All those works of the law, the law of Moses, all that we deny, all that we separate from, but we will not indulge in the works of the flesh because anyone indulging in the works of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. I will inherit the kingdom of God. The Lord confirm it in Jesus' name. Let's look at number two here. Number, uh, number, number three, rather. We're looking at number three. The incoherent tri 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 tricksters who becloud his love. The